If there was one way I could describe what was going through the minds of every single Charlton fan on Monday and Tuesday, it would probably go something like this. What the hell is going on? Oh, fucking no. I, I don't know, Jim. <laughs> You're so oh, fucking... No. Tell me what the fuck is going on! How the fuck do I know? Don't really know what's happening, Jim. <laughs> fucking hell! Where'd he go? Could be, could be not. You typical fucking idiot! What is happening? What's going on guys, Tyler here and welcome to a new video. Now, it's safe to say that over the last few days, a lot has gone on at Charlton Athletic at the moment. And if you're a Charlton fan and you don't know what's going on, have you been living under a rock? And if you're not a Charlton fan, don't worry. Because this video is just me explaining everything that happened over the last couple of days. Everything that went on between Roland de Chatelet, Charlton's owner, Charlton's manager Lee Bowyer, and everything that's happened over the last few days will be explained in this video. And I'm going to give my thoughts on it and try to calm down because my views on our, my, my owner... Um, Charlton's owner at the end of this um, after the situation is pretty explicit so I'm going to keep it on the lowdown keep it PG so I'm going to cast your memories back to Friday the 14th of June 2019 that was the day that Lee Boyer had to sign his contract by otherwise he could leave the club for free now Roland had his representative Levy Enderturk to lead the negotiations for Lee Bowyer's contract. And surprise, surprise, Levien deadlocked the negotiation. And then Roland personally took over the negotiation and managed to get the deadline pushed back to Friday the 21st of June 2019. Yay! Keep that date in mind because that is very relevant to what we're going to get into in a minute. So with the deadline pushed back, it seemed that there was some positive news going around. It seemed that Bowyer wasn't exactly gone yet like we didn't know yet we would find out on friday then completely out of nowhere like of course monday the 17th of june 2019 started off quite positive for charlton fans of course we confirmed the signing of macaulay bon our first transfer of the uh, window literally hours later halfway through i was recording the video that you saw on monday which was of course the first episode of addicts editions I received news from my dad that Lee Bowyer was leaving Charlton. Hold on a minute! Then I saw the club statement on Charlton's website confirming that the club had failed to reach an agreement with Lee Bowyer's contract. No! God, please, no! No! It took everyone by surprise. It took everyone completely by surprise. And I think that no one was expecting it the fact that the deadline was on friday which hasn't passed yet by the way and then all of a sudden on monday it's come out that he's gone it took everyone by surprise and then the club's statement don't even get me started about that because i know exactly who writ that statement and i think we all know writ that statement have no fear because i got it right in front of me right now which i'll be reading to you in a second from our owner chatting complete nonsense again do you understand the words that are coming out of my so this absolute abomination of a statement that was left on Monday the 17th of June reads as follows. Charles Athletic have been unable to reach an agreement with manager Lee Bowyer regarding the extension of his contract. I didn't touch upon this, but the fact that this was released on Monday and then the deadline, which hasn't passed yet, because it's, it's currently the 19th of June on Wednesday at the time I'm recording this, like... It just seems to me that Bo Roland just wasn't bothered to keep continuing. They just he thought that Lee wasn't getting anywhere. Sod it. Lee wasn't getting anywhere. Sod it. I can't be asked. Bo, you can go if you can't meet my terms and conditions. That's what I can gather at least. Uh, the statement continues on. The fact that the, the fact the club is for sale has not helped with finding an agreement. The current owner needs to take into account that a new owner may not may want to appoint his own manager. However, this concern did not stop the current owner proposing a contract extension of one year to Lee Bowyer, even though the club may be sold in a few weeks. Under those circumstances, a multi-year extension would not be good business practice. <laughs> Starting off brilliantly, aren't we? The current owner needs to take into consideration that a new owner may want to appoint his own manager. What new owner that buys a football club would ever consider doing that? What owner would do that? Seriously. I've never seen an owner come into a football club and sack a manager straight away and create his own term. No, create his own thing at the club. No owner does that. 
It just tells me that Roland just doesn't know anything about football. Under those circumstances, a multi-year extension would not be a good biz business practice because the club's for sale. By that logic, that makes me sound like, why did we sign Macaulay Bon? Like, if that's not good business practice, why did we sign Bon? The 200k we spent on Bon could have been used towards Bowie's contract. By that logic, like, the stuff in Roland's head, just, it, like, I don't know what goes on in his head, like, the cogs, they're, they're not turning. In addition, since the club is losing, still losing money, which is one of the reasons why the club has not been sold yet, the focus on reducing costs means that we are extremely limited on payroll increases. The reason the club's losing money is because of Roland himself. Need I say more? Lee had been offered a one-year extension to his contract at a level which is approximately three times what he had what he, when he, what he had since his last increase when he became permanent manager in September. It is six times what he earned when he started as assistant manager in 2017 and 50% more than what Chal any Charlton manager previously had, excluding the Premier League years. This reflects the strong desire we have to continue to have Lee as our manager, but Lee wanted much more. Yeah, Lee wanted to be on level terms with the other championship managers. He wanted to be paid fairly, which of course is justified he deserves to be on that amount of money because he practically has saved this football club he's brought the unity and the fans back together he's basically made it one big happy family if Boya wasn't in charge we wouldn't have sold out the valley in the playoff semi-final against Doncaster we wouldn't have also, the fact that it says that he's been offered six times more than what he was earning when he was assistant manager when he took over in March 2017, that tells me that Boya wasn't on anything to start with. He wasn't on anything like when he was in charge recently, like when he was in charge during the playoffs. Like Apparently, he was, he was on higher League 2, lower League 1 manager wages, which is... It can't be offered in the championship, let's be real, because he deserves a hell of a lot more. The owner understands Lee's point of view because many championship clubs pay huge amounts. Some pay millions of pounds per year to their manager. It is fair that Lee feels he should be paid like, like many other championship managers. That's the average championship club that the, that the average championship club makes a loss of around 15 million per, 50 million per year is not something players should care about. The owners are crazy. Now you're calling the championship owners crazy because they're offering their managers so much money. The championship is such a competitive league now. Like, millions upon millions of pounds are spent in that league per season, and you're calling them crazy. That just tells me that, for one, you know absolutely nothing about English football and what the hell goes on. And second of all, it's a complete disrespect to Boya. 100%. Like, the, the amount of disrespect that this guy showed for his staff over the course of the years. Chris Powell was a prime example when he first came in, and now he's doing it to Boya. It's just completely disrespectful. The fact that he's gone and got us promoted to the championship for the first time in three years, like, we probably wouldn't have done if we didn't have Boyer at the helm. And then Boyer's asked to be treated fairly, and then Roland's going, oh, the owners are crazy because they're offering more money. It's just disrespectful. The geese is just an absolute pleb. This is why we could not come to an agreement. Another element, another element may have been influenced as well. Unlike previous contract discussions, Lee wanted an agent to handle it. We reluctantly accepted. However, involving a player agent in a manager contract discussion is not healthy. If the agent makes the, helps, them, helps make the manager more money, it may result in the manager to have a more positive attitude towards players proposed by the same agent. A conflict of interest. Obviously, Lee is above such things, but it is nevertheless not a healthy situation. The reason why you couldn't come to an agreement is because you couldn't be asked to give him the money that he deserves. Again, complete disrespect towards Boya. The club hasn't started to look for any other manager in the meantime and does not intend to appoint a permanent manager since the club is going to be sold. A caretaker manager will be announced in due course. In the meantime, the other staff members will continue to prepare the upcoming season which for which a lot of good work has been permanently performed already. You don't fuck that now! Bloody well done, mate. Absolutely fantastic. So not only are you going to get rid of our... Probably one of the best managers Charlton have ever seen in the recent years. Probably the best one we've seen. You're not only going to get rid of him, but you're also not going to bother bringing in a permanent manager. You're going to bring in a caretaker manager to take us over in the championship with 12 first-team players. You're a fuckhead! That's what you are! A fucking shithead! Doesn't make sense to me. Literally doesn't make sense to me. It seems to me that he just wants to destroy our football club. And then the last parts of that statement, like, staff members will continue to prepare the upcoming season for which a lot of good work has been performed already. What good work has been performed already? We've signed a non-league striker from Leighton Orient and lost our manager at that moment in time. Like, what good work has been performed? We've gone backwards since the playoff final. 
It's just ridiculous. The statement closes off with, if Lee does change his mind before his contract expires and chooses to continue his good work at Charlton, he is still welcome to stay. However, our ability to sell the club is the most important thing right now. Right then. So, our ability to sell the club is the most important thing right now. Did Roland seriously think that after he dismissed Lee Boyer as manager, saying that he wasn't going to give him a new contract, that they failed to reach an agreement... Was he seriously expecting the club to be sold? Because had Lee Bowyer not stayed, which we'll get onto in a minute, had he not stayed, the club wouldn't have been taken over. There is no way the club would have been taken over with 12 first-team players losing £10 million a season, no director, no CEO, no manager, and a delusional owner. Who's going to want to buy us? No one's going to meet his ludicrous terms. It's just ridiculous. So at that point, after that statement was released, I think everyone vented their anger out to Lee, to Roland and Chatelet and everyone was thinking, the club's gone backwards, this is our darkest day, it's not looking good for us. Then, out of nowhere, a tweet from TalkSport said that Lee Bowyer was bewildered for the fact that a statement had been released that he is leaving the club, even though he 100% wanted to stay. And at that moment, Charlton fans were just like, well, what the hell's going on then? Clearly, there's just a complete lack of communication. And then Richard Cawley come out on Twitter saying that the Chatelet and Boyer were going to meet tomorrow morning to continue discussion of contracts. And we're all just thinking the same thing. I don't know. The club has just released a statement saying that Bowyer is leaving. And now they're going to re-enter talks. And on Tuesday, the 18th of June, 2019, the first thing in the morning, Bowyer extended, his, extended a one-year contract with Cholton for next season. I'm not fucking leaving! The show goes on! <laughs> Crystal Palace say it all the, term, all the time, but I have to say, I've got to agree with them. Our club, in those last two days, was an absolute circus. An absolute circus. Like, this statement was just a complete waste of time. It was literally written like a 14-year-old having a tantrum. That's really funny. <laughs> that statement was just a complete waste of time. Roland jumped to conclusion straight away because he couldn't be bothered to meet Bowie's demands, but then since the fans bullied him and gave him backlash, he decided to act and give Bowie the contract he deserved, which reportedly is 12 times more than what he was on when he was assistant manager, which is a, is a massive improvement, but... I don't really think anyone genuinely knew what was going on. Like, the fact that the stat statements come out and now Bowie's extended a contract, it's just, like, really confusing. The club released another statement about Bowie's uh, agreement. Charlton Athletic are delighted to confirm that Alex boss Lee Bowie has agreed a contract extension with the club. Bowie led Charlton to promotion last season as his team capped a tremendous year with a dramatic 2-1 victory over Sunderland in the League One player final at Wembley. After a period of negotiations, Bowie has penned a one-year contract extension as the club embarks on its first season back in the Championship. Lee Bowyer said, We went on a real journey last season. The club came together, the players, the staff, the fans, and we achieved something special. The journey hasn't finished yet, and I'm delighted this has all, all been agreed. This has been a long process, and I never wanted to leave. I love this club. There you go. I'd like to thank the owner for giving me the initial opportunity, and now for continuing to believe in me. You just know he's just like, he's holding stuff back, because like... He even said on Sky Sports, which I couldn't find the article for. I did try to look for it, but I couldn't find it. He said on talks. He said on um, Sky Sports and Talksport that his wife told him first about the statement. So not even Boya knew anything. Lyle Taylor didn't know anything. Boya didn't know anything. Literally, no one knew anything about the statement being released, which tells me exactly that Roland put that statement up on the website. Like, genuinely, not even Ro Boya was aware of the statement, and he was absolutely baffled because I'm assuming he expected negotiations to continue through the week until the deadline had come up. But Roland just jumped to conclusion straight away. But he continued to say, we have a fantastic fan base here and my focus continues to be getting our club squad in the best possible shape for the championship next season. Charlton Athletic owner Ronald de Chatelet said, when Lee has achieved, what Lee has achieved in his short time at the club is very impressive. He has united the club once again. This part's gold. The, the last part is golden. I would like to thank Lee for his professionalism during this process. While the negotiations have been ongoing, he has continued to work on building a squad for the club's championship campaign. Stability is essential, and I am very happy, very pleased. We are now have the best man in place to lead us forward next season. <laughs> Oh, chest. I can't 
you're killing me, mate. Stability is essential. How can you call for stability, yet you wanted to get rid of our manager? Tell me that, hey? That's basically what happened. That was the situation that happened over the last few days. It was literally just crazy. Like, no one generally knew what's going on. But, basically, in the aftermath, Boya has extended a one-year contract with the club. He's going to be with us next season. And... Of course, that is delightful news. It's fantastic news. I'm going to end the video there. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn those post notifications on so you're notified of when I post. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers. We are on 947, I believe, the last time I checked. We're edging even closer to that mark. I hope we can get it before the start of the season. That would honestly be incredible. What do you guys think about the situation, whether you're a Charlton fan or you're not a Charlton fan? Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. This has been Tyler Runnington. Have a nice day, and I will see you all in the next video.